Oh, uh, boy. Jake Hedberg, BeaverBlitz.com, is reporting multiple sources indicate that Oregon State All-American running back Damian Martinez intends to enter the transfer portal when it opens next week. The transfer portal, it will open on April 16th. We already have a host of guys that are are saying that you know they intend to uh, enter the portal. I think yesterday it was, was it Marcus Harper for Oregon? Um, in it, we, there was that report that he intended to enter the uh, transfer portal from from the Ducks. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Um, and now, t- so you're gonna have guys that that are gonna start popping up and uh, entering the transfer portal. And look, this is this is tough sledding right now for Oregon State. This is the death blow because remember. Everything that Damian Martinez said following the departure of Jonathan Smith. I'm staying. I'm sticking around. I'm I'm Oregon State through and through, all that stuff. And then, look, calmer heads prevail. Reality settled in. You're settling in on on looking down the roster at spring ball, and you, you say, Oh, boy. Not it. Look, this sucks for Oregon State fans. There, there's there's no other way around it. I mean, this is brutal for Oregon State. Yeah. You have an All-American running back who who planted his flag in the ground and adamantly said that he was he wanted to be a part of Trent Bray and the Beavs moving forward in, in year one with Trent Bray. And for this to happen, man, it sucks. I don't blame Damian Martinez one bit. He's got to, he's got to look out for himself. He's got to do what's best for him. And I think every transfer. And every college athlete has got to look at it in those terms. He gave everything he had to Oregon State. But look, sometimes you take a look around at, at the room and you say, I got to look out for me and my future, too. And this sucks for Beaver fans um, all around, man. This is brutal news for the Beavs. Yeah, I don't really think there's a way you can get around it. It's just, it, no, this is the nature of that beast. And it sucks because uh, this is now on top of the two women's transfers and there's reportedly more coming there. The, the men's, which isn't nearly as impactful because they were terrible, but this is, I mean, this, this is the last guy on the football team. Everybody else is gone. But, uh, you got gray, the offensive lineman who is probably not far behind him. I yeah. mean, that, that's the reality of it. Yeah. That, that is, you were hoping that they that with the money that they found and the way things were going with some of the reporting as far as the super conference and maybe Oregon state finding a way back in and all these other things that, they could just hold on. Yeah. And I just, how, how, and again, I don't fault any of these kids, not one of them. You got to do what you got to do. Yep. But it's just, it's, it sucks for the beefs. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the gist of it. Dems the breaks, man. And look, Martinez as a player, somebody's going to get rich off that guy, yeah. man. That that young man is a workhorse back. His NFL potential is through the roof. He is a projected for, like, first back off the board uh, heading into next year's NFL draft. He's a special one, man. He is, he is truly special. And now you look at, all right, so what does Oregon State have left in the cupboard? Um, you got Jam Griffin, who... He showed his flashes, but to have a one-two punch, Griffin would be that second punch that is that makes a backfield electric. Anthony Hankerson and Isaiah Newell, uh, those are the three running backs that are scholarship running backs that, that remain on Oregon State's roster right now. And if for anything that you could say about the, the momentum that Trent Bray could build in this first year of the unknown that Oregon State is entering, this is a death blow, man. This is a, a brutal one, especially with all the skill positions that they lost uh, to the portal and obviously your quarterback room uh, being decimated as well. Damian Martinez not being in that backfield is 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 brutal for him. And now you look at, all right, what does this look like moving forward um, with Oregon State and what does the future look like for this offense? Because... There's tough decisions uh, that are going to be made by the remaining players, but you look at the schedule and the way that it, it, it shakes out. You B fans are sitting there and they were squinting, saying, "Yeah, maybe eight wins." You know, I don't think Damian Martinez is a guy that takes you from eight down to like two or three, but 
what may follow does probably might take you down down that path because you got the schedule has San Diego State, it's got Oregon, Purdue, you've got UNLV, which had a great year last year and uh, kind of made a surge. Cal is always a tough out no matter what, and they're they're on to greener pastures in the ACC. Washington State and Boise State uh, on the schedule for next year. That's not the easiest schedule in the world for the Beavs to navigate, especially when you're having to break in so many new positions and so many new uh, players to the system. Yeah, I mean, you're looking for the silver lining, and maybe I'm I'm not looking hard enough. I just, I, I don't. There isn't. I, I, there's just nothing there. Like, God, this is going to sound horrible. I mean, how much further ahead of Portland State are you? A lot. Uh, you're still miles. You're miles. You're miles. Miles. Miles and miles on ahead. the roster right now. Yes, miles. Okay. Wait, I mean, it's not even close. Mm. I mean, that one is not. It, it's not even a question. Okay, there. I'll trust you on that. Yeah. How much of an indictment though is this on Bray? I don't think it's I an indictment it on is, yeah. on Bray. I think it is. He took a look around and went, "I I see what I see what left. I see what's coming back." And how how. He he, good soldiered at the beginning, and I, I think it helped hold together what they had of a recruiting class. Um, but I I'm not I'm I'm not. I just if you are an Oregon State fan, now you're sitting there and you're going, all right, is Josh Gray going to be the next that next guy to bolt? Is Grant Stark going to be a guy who takes off and does he bolt? It's this is. This is tough because, look, your quarterbacks are Ben Goldbranson, and then um, you got the the kid from Idaho who transferred in. Um, he's really good. Yeah, was it uh, Giovanni McCoy? McCoy. Yeah, and he can. He's got some wiggle to his game. He'll move around, run around. He was a he big was reason why they were good at Idaho. I only watched a couple of games of theirs when they were like in the playoffs, and they'd throw them on at you know eight o'clock at night kickoffs in the. FCS playoffs, but uh, they made it to the quarterfinals, and it's this, there's no way to put it. This is going to be a a brutal dredge uphill for Trent Bray and his staff, and like the the guy I feel worse for is uh, Ryan Gunderson, who's former beef was down at UCLA with Chip, comes up, takes the offense coordinator job at Oregon State, and when you have a back like Damian Martinez, that's your that's, that's your basis. That's yeah. your that's your focal point of how you're turning this thing around. Remember the other offensive linemen that they brought in were they brought in two guys from Colorado last year. And Colorado's offensive line was a disaster. They may be big, but that was an absolute disaster of an offensive line. Now you're not going to be playing a full Pac-12 schedule, but you got some really tough games against some pretty damn good programs, um, and you're going to have to put that together. You know that in that to me, Danny, when you're talking about like how far off are you from like Portland State, the the reason why they are miles away, miles ahead, Colorado started three and zero, and <laughs> remember that. That's fair. That's like, fair. I mean, the talent of an FBS player, whether they are kickbacks from another school or whatever, you are you're still. Yeah, that wasn't your, fair to lump it with Portland State, but at the same point, it was just like the, the I can't. I mean, we we see exoduses. This is this is Bad. something entirely different. Yeah, like th- this is with the exception again of Gray, who may or may not also go. There's nobody left that you're sitting there going, "Yeah, that's a that's a Power Five guy." You know what I mean? Like where you're like, "That's a dude that you can count on." It's yeah. and that sucks. I, I I don't I I hate seeing that for Oregon State. Yeah, it's brutal. Um, you know, you do have the bright spot of you still got <laughs> top five baseball program in the country, man, <laughs> and they're really damn good. Hopefully, that doesn't end up being a thing that that, that falls apart. All right, sorry, uh, B fans. That's that's a that's a gut punch right there. That's a death blow. Uh, Damian Martinez entering the transfer portal, according to uh, Beaver Blitz of Twenty Four Seven Sports.